I didn't want to tell y'all this, but I have an addiction. An unwavering addiction to saving money. I've tried time and time again to save less to, to save less money. To spend it on consumerism and stuff and just TVs and, and clothes and all this other shit. But I keep saving it. Help me. Help me stop saving money. I also have another addiction. The addiction to making more money. To being financially free. I don't want this life. I don't want it at all. The freedom to do what I want when I want. F you money. I have too much money in my bank account. Said no one ever. Said no one ever. <laughs> Well going bro, bro, bro. Welcome back to another style of edutainment. Hopefully you enjoyed my acting or my attempt at acting for that little minute. But yo, um the secret to not being broke is to cut down your expenses, strip it to the minimum, and then look for other avenues to make more money. A side hustle in addition to your actual job, you know, or just go completely into your side hustle and make that shit pop. But we're gonna get into it. Dave Ramsey. The secret to not being broke. A rant, courtesy of the man himself. <laughs> Let's go. Your income doesn't matter. Your age doesn't matter. Your race doesn't matter. Your geographical location doesn't matter. There's a thing that you and I are dealing with in your money, and it's called math. And none of those things I just mentioned give you a pass on math. And where people get themselves in trouble, including when I went broke many years ago because I was stupid, we get ourselves in trouble when we don't bother and do the math before we do the transaction. We're the stupid woman from San Diego who leased her dog for $5,400. We make $90,000 a year and somehow in our brains figure out that our children deserve a $50,000 Honda SUV. And now we have to take the kids out of private school because we can't pay the payments on the SUV and the private school because we didn't do math. We're 21 years old. We buy a $10,000 car, run up $10,000 in credit card debt, and have $10,000 in medical bills and make $30,000 a year. When you make $30,000 a year, there's nowhere in that plan that $30, the $10,000 car makes sense. There's nowhere in that plan that running up a bunch of credit card debt gives you any room to breathe. You already can't breathe. We have three kids. We make $28,000 a year. Should I go back to work, the woman asks. $28,000 income with three kids. Our health care is provided by Medicaid, which is welfare, because we qualify. If I go back to work, we won't qualify for that. And if we go back to work, if I go back to work, they'll have to pay for daycare. And I'm not sure I'm going to even break even. At least she was doing math up front and thinking about it before she made the decision. And, of course, her answer to her equation is both she and her husband need to develop some kind of a long-term career path and a short-term series of part-time jobs and extra jobs and small business ideas that create an income that at least doubles. The bad news is they only make $28,000 whether you have an actual business or just a side hustle, it is imperative, 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 imperative that you have your main drive that is giving you income, but a second source of income to supplement just expenses and just in general, just being able to have more money available to you, right? Your main, your main job, work at it nine to five, and then having a side hustle, whether it be renting your place with Airbnb, whether it be taking up an actual, like another job, although it may not be the best, or even starting YouTube videos, talking about your experience, like how much you make as a software engineer or how much you make as a stylist, hairstylist. People love watching videos about making money <laughs> or looking at potential career options that they might want, may want to do and then they find your video. And usually the videos about money or making money tend to get more income, right? So starting a YouTube channel, talking about your experience at your current job, what it's like and stuff like that, definitely uh, uh, something you should look into. <laughs> and even reviewing the products you already have at home with Amazon affiliate program, posting a video about it, and then just giving you a testimony and then leaving your affiliate links in the description. You can, especially how it is now, you can't just have one source of income. Maybe you want to quit, maybe you, you get fired or the company closes down. Now, what, now what's going on? You have nothing else going on outside of the current job. Unless you have a stake in the company, that's one thing, but you still want a second source of income just to Take care of yourself, right? And especially, I think one of the biggest purchases people make up front is a car, right? Always pay the car in cash. The only reason 
you should never or you shouldn't think about think twice about paying for a car in cash is if you already have the money for the for the car but you're using it on a different investment that's giving you a a bigger ROI like the ROI the, the return on investment of the investment is greater than the interest rate on the car that's the only reason why you should even consider not purchasing the car in cash right and even at that is like most people aren't <laughs> aren't thinking long term in that in that matter anyway. So you're best better off just paying for the car in cash and going about your day without having payments coming out of your account on a daily basis, right? Or monthly basis. Just look at your look at your accounts, look at your bank account, see what see what is is constantly being taken out and cut that shit off. Whether it be Netflix, whether it be Hulu, whatever it is, whatever you gotta do. And even your know, addictions, <laughs> the man, the money you spend on weed. The money you spend on alcohol, coffee, <laughs> stuff like that. So, addictions in, in them in themselves can also be very expensive. Here, the good news is, with a little bit of work and ingenuity, they easily can double their household income. And then they don't have to worry about being on the government dole. And you got a long-term game plan to get yourself out. It's not a matter of simply her going back to work. That's a limited view of the situation. I actually didn't answer her question properly when she called. What does all of this have in common? Every single one of these things have in common. Adults devise a plan and follow what children do, what feels good. Stephen Covey in the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, says, number one habit of highly effective people is they're proactive. They happen two things. One of the other habits is you begin with the end in mind. Mm. So when broke people say, I can afford this, you know what they're saying? I think I might be able to pay the payments. That's what broke people mean when they say that. If you don't want to be broke people anymore, you get out of the land of payments. If you don't want to be broke people anymore, you sit down and you say, hey, here's what we make. Here's the size of our mess. What are we going to do to increase our income and decrease our outgo to be able to address the mess faster? It really is sixth grade or fourth grade math. It really and truly is. But you have to get in front of it instead of running behind it all the time. Getting in front of it is you look at your situation before you make a decision, not after you've made the decision. A $44,000 SUV when you make $85,000 a year is stupid. Whether you paid cash for it or not, it's still stupid. But when you finance it, it's double, triple stupid. But it felt good when you bought it and mama's going to be pissed at Dave Ramsey because her husband called the show and he said, you're stupid. And mama loves that car, I'll just tell you. As a young kid, right? I always saw a new car or a car in general. I'm like, yo, this car is awesome. Or whenever I was riding in someone's car, I'm like, yo, this car is cool. This is like, you feel good like being in a cool car. But then as I've gotten more financially literate, I no longer, see, I see past the, the shiny glossiness of the car. I'm like, hmm, how much is your monthly payment on this car? If you don't, if it's not, if you haven't bought it, if you haven't purchased it outright, right? I'm like, what is your monthly payment on this car? <laughs> Once you start knowing more, you don't get uh, easily swayed by the shiny object. <laughs> How many times has that story been repeated in the last 25 years? I'm a cuss word in some of your all's houses. That's fine. I'm, everybody's got to have a gift. I've got it. I'm okay. But we have to begin with the end in mind. It's called being a grown-up. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the situation and go, there's no possible way a sane individual is going to make that decision. But the thing is that we're not sane when we're making half the decisions because we're operating on about a four-year-old level, meaning we impulse our butts off. I'm tired, and when you want to cook tonight, it's got to eat. It's got to eat. We gotta go out to eat because I'm tired. I work hard. I'll call the wambulance. We all work hard. I'm sorry. If you'd have followed me around the last six days, you'd be in the hospital, some of you. We all work hard. Wah. Wah. You poor little thing. Because let me tell you what that going out to eat looks like. It looks like you're 26 years old, you make 30,000 bucks a year. You're 21 years old, you make 30,000 bucks a year, and you have $10,000 in credit card debt. Because you beep off in and out of restaurants, you beep off onto a vacation you can't afford, you beep off your butt down to the pet store and buy something you can't afford, you beep off through Target. Some of you go to Walmart for entertainment, give me a break. <laughs> All right, so obviously, I don't recommend, most people can't handle a credit card, let's be honest. But if you do end up using a credit card for whatever reason, because you either want to repair it or you still build up some type of credit, I would recommend nobody use more than 30% of their credit card limit. If you, use more, if you, don't, if you don't use more than 30%, you will always have um, a buffer period in terms of like how much you can actually pay on it. <clears throat> and even some banks, they try to increase your limit. Never allow them to increase your limit. Just be content. You'll, you're not using the, the, the card just as a, another source of, another like income source or another like an extension of your income only use it have the mind that you're only using it to build a little bit of credit don't even don't even care about the cashback because cashback and honestly the only way you make money more money on the cashback is by spending more money does that, does, that, does that make sense the only way you make money on the cashback is by spending more money so only have the credit card there 
as a ways to like build your credit if need be, right? But most people shouldn't even have a credit card, they can't handle it. So your best bet is no more than 30% of the limit. But usually you spend more money regardless. You might be a redneck if Walmart is your entertainment. <laughs> and no wonder you run up debt. No wonder you can't breathe. No wonder, because you got you got payments coming out your dadgum ears, man. And nobody goes in debt. Ten, listen, people that make $30,000 a year, they're 21 years old, they don't go $10,000 in debt in one purchase. Mm. They don't run, they don't use a credit card and buy one thing for $10,000. No, it's $1,050 things. Mm. It's death by a thousand cuts. And then you look up and go, oh my God, what have we done? What have we done? How stupid are we? Now, I'm on your team. I've done it too. But I'm just telling you, a lot of the stuff that's happened in this hour on this show is stuff that is unbelievably preventable. You just look at it and go, no, we're not going to rent our dog. As a matter of fact, we're not going to finance our dog. No one sure crap not financing a cat. You know, it's not happening. Period. Period. We're not, we're not buying this car, honey. I know you want a nice car, honey. But you know what? We're broke. Broke people don't buy $45,000 Honda SUVs. We're broke. And you know how I know we're broke? Because we don't have any money. That's how I know we're broke. Well, we make a lot of money. Yeah, but it's all gone. Have you not noticed? We don't have any money. We don't have any money. We don't have any money. No, we're not going out to eat. Why? We're broke. We don't have any money. You're not in freaking Congress. You can't just print it in the basement. You have to live on less than you make, and you have to have a plan, and you have to be intentional. I meet people that make $30,000 a year that save money. I meet people that make $130,000 a year that couldn't save money if they had to. It doesn't have anything to do with the income. It's got to do with you freaking controlling the person in your mirror. It's you deciding, I'm going to be a grown-up. I'm going to be an adult. And that's if you're 52, you're 22, or you're 12. Adults devise a plan and follow it. Children do what feels good. Everybody's all worried about everybody's feelings these days. I'm not worried about your feelings. I'll make a living hurting your feelings. I don't give a crap about your feelings. I, 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 listen, let me tell you what feels good. Not having any dead gun payments, that's what feels good. <laughs> having a pile of money in the bank, that feels good. Being wealthy enough to be take your eyes off yourself and not be so bad blamed self-centered and actually be generous mm. where there's some room, some margin in your budget and you can give money to somebody else that's hurting. That feels good. Mm. But no, we live on the junk food of finance. And, and financially, we've got an obese culture <laughs> that's lost its mind. And so you guys, you have to be weird. Normal is broke. The Wall Street Journal says 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. That's seven out of ten houses on your street, and I don't care what street you live on. That's seven out of ten houses. See all those ten houses in your mind? Seven of those people are broke. Oh, they look good, but they're acting rich. They're not rich. It's what they call in Texas, big hat, no cattle. Don't live like that. It's time to be weird. The motto I want you to live by whenever the urge to purchase something comes into your mind or extra stuff is to stack your money at broke. When it gets your bread and all the crumbs to build up your, build up your income, Stra strap and scrap your expenses, whatever you gotta do, whether it be downsize your, your lifestyle, downsize your house, go to a smaller place, go back home with mom and dad, sleep on the couch, whatever you gotta do in part time. But you gotta get, you gotta get into your financial bag. Get into your financial bag. Stop stop going willy nilly with your expenses. Stop going willy nilly with your with your budgeting. And anytime you see something you wanna buy, ask yourself, how much of life would it, would it cost me to make the money back? If something costs $200, how much of my time would it cost me to make that money back? And even when you want to buy something then and there, give it 24 hours and you'll see that you probably don't even want that thing anymore, okay? And moreover, you need to be around people, get with a person, whether it be friendship-wise or romantic-wise, that's also on the same page and motivates you to be more financially conscious with your spending and hustles you to make more money, all right? So God bless, much love, peace, and joy. Namaste. Always remember, it doesn't feed you, don't water it, and too much of any good thing is good for nothing. Do more and say less. All right, bro. Deuces.